Hello English students, once again we confront our enemy, the dreaded comma splice. Now listen, in the scheme of things, comma splices are not the end of the world, but they are one of those things that make you look like a less capable writer, and they also actually make your work harder to read because a full stop or terminal punctuation says to your reader, okay, that's what I've got to say about this topic, go store it in your brain. And if you just keep stringing things together with commas, it's like handing somebody parcel after parcel. Eventually they're going to start dropping them, they're not going to be able to hold them. So this is why I go on about comma splices, so this is why we're going to talk about it for the next couple of minutes. Let's start with Wilberforce ran to the door. Now this could be a sentence. We've got our subject, Wilberforce, and he ran to the door. Now barking madly could not be a whole sentence because there's nobody doing it. When we put them together we understand that it's Wilberforce doing it. So the way that we break up a sentence is with a comma. So this is fine except I need a small b. So that once I put a full stop on the end is fine. Wilberforce ran to the door barking madly. That's what a comma does. It says hey I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm describing the action here. I'm giving you a bit more detail. So that's an appropriate use of a comma. But if you wrote Wilberforce ran to the door, he was barking madly, then Wilberforce ran to the door, and he was barking madly. So this is actually two sentences. So we can punctuate it like that, and they can still sit together. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is just to put in a um, conjunction, and he was barking madly. That's quite fine. If you wish to be a bit more sophisticated, you can replace the AND with a semicolon, which works like a conjunction, and this is fine. This is basically saying these two sentences belong together. Um, what you cannot do is add a comma, because a comma says I'm breaking up my sentence. It's not I am gluing two sentences together, and because these have one subject, two subjects doing different things, they're two sentences. So you can put AND. Now that little comma there, that's optional. That comma's not trying to join up the sentence. The AND joins the sentences. This is just saying to the reader, I'm about to change tack a little bit. So let's go on. It was the postman wearing a blue cap. Now first one, IT. What was it? It was the postman wearing a blue cap. Now wearing a blue cap is not a whole sentence, it's a dependent clause, so that can be joined on because it's not a whole sentence. We're not joining two sentences together, we're just adding a bit of detail to our sentence. So that's valid now, it was the postman wearing a blue cap. I need a full stop there of course to end it off. But if I say, in fact if I say if it was the postman, which could be a sentence, who was wearing a blue cap? Uh, hat, sorry. Now that could be a question, but without a question mark, it's in fact just a fragment. Who was who was wearing a blue hat? You know, who was who wearing a blue hat? It doesn't hold together. So it is in fact just detail about the first sentence, and so it can be joined on with a comma. So you can join fragments on with a comma. You just can't bolt whole sentences together with a comma. So I guess that's what I I want you to be mindful of. So here we go. It was the postie. It was the postie, full stop. She was wearing a blue cap. These are entire sentences. They can stay separate. You can put a conjunction in. If you put a conjunction, we need to lose that capital. We could use a semicolon. We could just leave them as separate sentences. What we cannot do, or what we should not do, because it's just not fair to our reader. I've just jumbled that up, haven't I? What we should not do, because it's not fair to our reader and might confuse them, is put a comma there because we're not adding detail, we're adding a whole other sentence. So I'll get rid of that and I'll fix it up. So the way to get around this is be mindful of the subjects in your sentence. Once somebody has finished doing their action, you either need to put, put, pop a conjunction in or finish up your sentence. And you will get to know this as you write. The last thing to keep in mind is that your comma divides the sentence and conjunctions join sentences. And that's the end.